Verse 2, chapter 12. And be not conformed to this world. You know, I look at churches today and they're mm. trying so hard to conform to this world. When God says expressly don't. He tells us to be peculiar and it's, it's amazing to see history repeat itself. But, you know, if you're peculiar, you're going to be singled out. And people are, people that never come to, that have never walked in this door, never talked with me, never been to a service, are warning other people now. Be careful, that's a cult. Yep. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> well, I, can, I understand. I understand. <laughs> Look, he didn't call your name. Yeah, he said, it wasn't a call. But out. that, you know how many times that's happened? Over, I mean, it, it sort of becomes humorous after a while. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> We screwed up. <laughs> That's another story, which is funny in of itself, but God's grace is such that it didn't matter because you're still here. Your right? wife told on me. Yeah, well, you ain't, it ain't just you, Casey. No, it used to be. I mean, it's, we have a lot of hands raising. I mean, it's whole just. Thing right now. I, the thing is, it's, it's when you're peculiar and you're different and you're like fanatical for Christ, oh man. It doesn't matter where you go. Doesn't matter you're going, to get the same, you're going to get the same story because the brighter you shine that light, the less people want to be around it. Well, well let me back up. The less evil wants to be around it. Those that want the truth will come to it. <coughs> and that's why I have no doubt that the Lord will bring here who He wants here. Because Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. Amen. I am less concerned about conforming this fellowship to be like the world than I am about Hopefully, my conforming myself and showing you how to conform yourself yeah, to walk with Christ. To conform ourselves to the body of Christ is what we're going for, not to conform to the world. If we, if to sacrifice ourselves daily is our reasonable service, then not being conformed to the world is going to be the natural result of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Goes on. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. And that's the point I want to get to. How many of us here need a transformation? Amen. <laughs> transformation of our hearts to go from an evil heart to a heart after God. I remember in Vermont, my wife was struggling with some things, and Steve asked her, would you like me to pray for you to have a servant's heart? Now... <laughs> She said yes. <laughs> Not with that. Well, she's smart enough now to know. Well, well, well smart's the right word. She's she's been through that enough times to know that that has two sides to it. <laughs> because if you're going to have a servant's heart, what does that mean? You're going to do? You're going to serve. Do some serving. You're going to serve. You're going to serve others, not yourself. See how that works? Okay. Now. The way you learn that is you have opportunities to serve others and not yourself. Right. Another movie I like, which was that Evan Almighty, and I always screw up the line, but the point is that God asked the ladies, or not God, the guy playing God, asked the lady, you know, if you ask for love and togetherness in your family, you think God just pops down a warm fuzzy, or does he give you opportunity to learn love and togetherness with your family? that way with us. If we pray to be transformed and have our heart transformed, He is going to allow opportunities in our lives to accomplish the transformation. That's right. So I don't get upset. Well, let me back up. I see the big picture when there's a bunch of crap going on. There's no other way to put that. You know, when things are just crappy and things aren't going smooth, I see the bigger picture because all of that is opportunity for us to learn what God wants us to learn. Right. Because you come out of that struggle, if you make it out the struggle, you'll come out of that struggle stronger for Christ. Mm -hmm. With a deeper faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Knowing how 15. to follow Christ. Christ. And work with hope. And experience work with hope. That's right. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. 
This is the other question I want to ask you today. Question one, who do you follow? Who are you following after every day as you're walking in your day? Question two, what are you putting into your mind? What are you spiritually digesting? Are you digesting those things that bring you closer to Christ? Or are you digesting those things that take you closer to the world? Now, I'm not going to tell you what those things are because that's between you and God. But the principle remains the same. I know my buddy Phil. I always knew when Phil was about to go into a funk because he started listening to some god-awful music. I mean, angry stuff. Oh, angry, violent, just not good stuff. And then you'd watch his attitude deteriorate, 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 deteriorate. I remember my wife really struggling with trust issues. I mean, she, both of us come from households that have divorce in it. And adultery. You know, when, when God said, I will visit the iniquities of the fathers under the third or fourth generation of them that hate me. You know, there's a generational curse that comes down with all that garbage. And it's our hope to stand in Christ and see that broken for our daughter. And she was struggling with trust issues because her dad cheated on her mom. So every man is a cheater. Right? I mean, that's the seed that that lays. And if you've had... You know, if you've been abused, then every man or every whoever your abuser was, every one of those is an abuser. That's the seed that that lays. Right. And she was spending a lot of time watching stuff. She liked it. I forgot. It was bold and beautiful or whatever it was. I don't know. Stories. Drama. We'll just call it drama. And you know what? The drama in that was just about who's going to sleep with who next and who's going to cheat on who next. You know, that didn't do very much for her spiritual walk. That tended to sow more seed, more seed, and more seed, and more seed. And I've been on my buddy Paul. I love Paul. But he used to spend, and I don't know how much he is now, but he used to spend way too much time listening to talk radio. Which was negative, 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 negative. You get the point? And guess what Paul was? Negative. What are you digesting? I got the joy, joy, joy. <laughs> Vegetales. Yeah, vegetables. Yeah. That well, actually some of that could be people. somewhat problematic too, but the point is vegetables. that you need vegetables. to go between you and God. Brian's talking about do the work. Yeah. We're not talking about working your salvation. That's not what we mean. But the point is that it says earnestly contend, diligently, fervently. All these words that God uses to describe our walk with Him I mean, there's effort applied on our part. Amen. Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right? Mm -hmm. That means you need to spend time in your closet with the Lord. Lord, you're Lord of my life. I obviously make really crappy choices. So I need you to help me make some good ones. Amen. Hallelujah. You show me what you would have me do today. I'm done running my own life. That's how your mind will get transformed. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're going to go through opportunities to learn the transformation. Right. And you better reconcile yourself to surrender it all daily. And you'll have bad days. I guarantee you, you're going to have a day where you say, get my audience here, <clears throat> where you're going to say, darn it all to heck, I'm not going to do it anymore. Darn it all to heck. <laughs> I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is public.